My, oh my, do we live in interesting times. I remember the first time that it was explained to me that the greeting, may you live in interesting times, is right up there with, bless your heart. <laughs> Neither are a blessing, and the proverb is a bit of a gentle curse, or perhaps a warning about times like these. We live in a time of contradictions. We resist labels while demanding that we are referred to by the proper label. We celebrate social media as the universal democratization of voice, while railing against social media as inequitable narcissistic echo chamber. We sit and we, we think and we watch excruciating scenes of the killing of our neighbors on street corners, in grocery stores, in churches, in school classrooms, in countries we cannot even pronounce. And we cry for justice and we demand compassion using words and tone and body language eerily similar to the vitriol that put us in those moments of violence in the first place. We all want equity until we realize we're the ones with privilege. I am a poet and an engineer. I am still experiencing the wonders of being a stranger in a strange land. There are days when I am out and about and people who look nothing like, who live nothing like me will strike up a random conversation. I am a published poet with three engineering degrees who is now running a history museum. <laughs> clearly, my issue, <laughs> clearly my issue is not with contradictions. My issue is that our refusal to acknowledge the beauty, the power, and the interconnection of our contradictions is creating spaces where new isms and them phobias are evolving daily. Our communities are constantly on the verge of fracture, and it is exhausting. I want to talk about reparative work. I want to talk about something that might just get us through this. I want to fight fire with fire, my personal instincts around contradictions notwithstanding. So here is my test solution to the problem. Let's try radical empathy. Spoiler alert, we are not about to hug it out. <laughs> the practice of radical empathy is the act of immersing yourself in another's story without judgment or fear of being judged. One more time. Radical empathy is the act of immersing yourself in another's story without judgment or fear of being judged. Some days it's difficult to figure out which part of that definition is harder. Let's consider the first part, without judgment. Can we be honest? It is really hard for human beings to not be judgy. <laughs> human perception is based on categorization, compartmentalization, familiarity, preference, hierarchy. Judgy is in our nature. Judgy is how we navigate a multi-layered complex world. Judgy is survival instinct. Judgy is going to have to take a back seat if we're going to get anywhere near the practice of radical empathy. Because when you immerse yourself into another's story in the practice of radical empathy, you can never disrespect that privilege by daring to judge the story. The second part of this is about entering without fear of being judged. Now, this does not mean you won't be judged. It just means you have agreed to step into that space without fear of it. And this all seems a little bit unfair. Radical empathy requires an incredible and courageous sense of self. But, but the practice of radical empathy is not about the practitioner. In the act of immersing yourself into someone else's story, you are not making an act of power or favor. This is an act of vulnerability. The practice of radical empathy requires the decentering of self. But I did promise that we were not about to hug it out, and here's why. When you think about radical act 
equity in its full context, in actual practice, maybe community repair, uh, relationship repair, racial reconciliation, community reconciliation, inclusive gentrification, equity, all of these spaces that are difficult and tough and hard and necessary. When you're thinking about the practice in that space, you are called to engage in empathy, but you're called to engage in empathy without sympathy. It's kind of like when you've got that kid that needs to get a shot or have their braces tightened or a Band-Aid ripped off, and you tell, the, you tell the kid, listen, it's the difference between saying, this is going to hurt you. Sorry. It's the difference between saying, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you which is not at all true, and telling them this is going to hurt, but I love you, so we're going to do it anyway together. I have uh, three engineering degrees from uh, private, privileged, and prestigious universities. I sit on all kinds of boards, nonprofit, for-profit, politically appointed. I'm called to be uh, advisor, advisory councils, expert panels, and all of this is code for saying I am a black woman that spends a lot of time in white male spaces. <laughs> I have learned to understand, rather, I have had to learn to understand how conversations that may just seem like right, like how we're going to move forward through this, to me, may sound like attacks on identity to some of those who are sitting across the table from me. I know how scary and hurtful it is to have your identity attacked. I know how painful and jarring it is when a system or a society seems to be trying to erase, to mold, or to reshape or diminish your sense of identity. When your history is being redefined right in front of you, I know that it feels like that is a direct, targeted, and personal assault. Radical empathy does not excuse any of us, including myself, from doing what must be done at the table. But at the same time, radical empathy demands that I acknowledge that I do understand how hard it may be for some at the table to do what the table is demanding. But I love you. So we're going to do this anyway together in three easy steps. Step one in the practice of radical empathy, show a little disdain for sympathy. We have already started that conversation. The practice of radical empathy can lead you dangerously close to the world of excuses, but rest assured, the effective practice of radical empathy does not diminish responsibility or accountability. This is not about stepping into someone else's shoes so that you can dismiss their actions because now you can relate. This is not about dutifully immersing yourself in someone else's story so you can nod your head in agreement and then go home with no action steps. The practice of radical empathy prepares us for the work ahead, be that restorative justice or simply sharing space with a people or person that activates all of your assumptions. Radical empathy prepares us for the work ahead. It unapologetically acknowledges that there is work to do for everyone at the table and unrelentingly shines a light on all of that work for each and every one at the table, including yourself. So the better you know yourself, the better you will be at this. Which leads me to step number two. Unleash your tribal instincts in all directions. Get as many tribes as possible. And here is where we start to come full circle. Here is where we start to reckon with the beauty, the power, and the interconnection of our contradictions. This idea of a tribe is about associating in community with people who are like-minded. They have the same interests or the same habits, same experiences, maybe the same identities, the same worldview. 
Now there is conversation around how some of the disconnect and discord that we are seeing in the world today has been amplified by the increasingly tribalistic way of self-identification. I slightly disagree. I don't think the problem is that we have too many tribes. I think the problem is that we have too few. We are multifaceted beings, and there is no such thing as one tribe to serve them all. There isn't even such a thing as one tribe to serve you. Belonging to multiple tribes that serve the multiple parts of who you are is how you become whole. Being able to have all the pieces of us nurtured and seen in these spaces and grown is how we begin to develop that courageous sense of self that allows us to immerse ourselves into another's story. Now, immersing yourself into another's story is a skill set like any other. The more practice, the better. The more tribes, the merrier. And this leads us then to the final step. Step three, easy to understand, really hard to do. Step three in the practice of radical empathy, learn to relate with your inside voice. <laughs> so imagine you are in the zone. You have immersed yourself in someone else's story and you are firing all cylinders. You are not judging, you are not being judged. You have brought all your tribes to the party and you are working and you are finally, finally, you get it. There is some nugget, some kernel of truth and understanding about another story that has just been clarified for you. And you feel the instinctual urge to share in this revelation. You will be tempted to utter the most dangerous phrase in all the world of radical empathy. You will feel yourself wanting to shout, I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> Don't do it. Do not do it. Now, interestingly, this consideration is not about whether or not that statement is true, because chances are that in that moment, you do understand and you can relate. And like any good solid practice, you will need time to reflect and consider everything that you have learned, everything that you now understand, and what you're going to do going forward. But that moment is not the moment. Remember, one of the most essential components of radical empathy is the decentering of self. When you immerse yourself in another's story, the practice of radical empathy is not about the practitioner, it's about the storyteller. It's about her, it's about him, it's about them. When we take on the gift of being inside someone else's story, we take on the responsibility of getting out of the way, getting out of the story's way, getting out of our own way. This last step of decentering is actually what transforms radical empathy from catchphrase to superpower. When we are in the practice of radical empathy, we are creating a path towards a space where the story can be shared in a place without judgment and without fear. And this tears down the last battle, the last barrier to taking on the full beauty, the full power, and the full interconnection of all of our contradictions. Now, this does nothing about bless your heart. <laughs> but I do believe that this practice of radical empathy holds great promise in us making good on living inside interesting times. Thank you.